The thyroid is a important gland that sits inside of your neck and it is crucial for managing metabolism. It plays a role in the function of other hormones in the body. It is essential for your brain health, your digestive health, and essentially for you to feel well day to day. So the thyroid is essentially setting a like regulatory mechanism of how fast or slow things run. It's going to control the thermostat of temperature. It's gonna help our body know like what's the rate at which we do things essentially. TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. It's essentially the hormone that gets secreted from your brain to the actual thyroid, and it's asking your thyroid to do work. It's asking it to make thyroid hormones. The two main thyroid hormones are T4 and T3. And essentially the way it works is TSH knocks on the door of the thyroid, it asks the thyroid to work, the thyroid will make T4, and T4 then gets converted into T3. T3 and T4 essentially do all the things that allow us to function. They help with our basal metabolic rate, they help with energy, brain function, mood, they support our digestion, they manage the control of other hormones like cortisol and sex hormones, so it's essential. So in a blood panel when you're looking at thyroid function, Typically, people will first look at the TSH or the thyroid stimulating hormone, which is that hormone that comes from the brain to the thyroid. And here, when you're looking at this marker, there's a range that is considered optimal. When you are too high with TSH, you might be thinking that your thyroid is underperforming because there's a feedback loop by which the brain talks to the thyroid if the thyroid is not responding, the brain starts yelling at the thyroid and the number goes up. Alternatively, if the TSH is low, it means that there may actually be too much thyroid that's being produced and it's telling the brain, hey, back off, stop yelling at me to produce because I'm, I'm done. So typically a high TSH, which actually correlates with low thyroid function or hypothyroidism may be caused oftentimes by an autoimmune condition. It can also be exacerbated by nutrient insufficiency. So specifically here, I think about selenium, iodine, zinc, vitamin D, when we think about nutrients that affect the thyroid. Um, and lastly, stress or adrenal dysfunction can worsen the function of your thyroid. Adrenal dysfunction essentially refers to the strength of your adrenals, which are two little you know, kidney-sized things that sit on top of your kidneys, and they manage the production of cortisol and DHEA, so they're very highly connected with your stress response. And when your stress response is elevated, you downregulate the function of your thyroid. So low TSH, remember, is actually more hyperthyroidism, where the thyroid is overactive. And here I think about stress as a driver as well, Typically, this is also an autoimmune condition, so we think about immune health and autoimmunity. And finally, some kinds of toxins can actually turn on this more kind of autoimmune function of the thyroid that may make you more hyperthyroid. So again, high TSH or low thyroid functioning, hypothyroidism, you may see weight gain, depression. You may see things like digestive slowing as seen in constipation. You may have trouble with temperature regulation. Those are probably the most common things that people struggle with. With low TSH or hyperthyroidism, you may struggle with anxiety, irritability, insomnia. You may be insatiably hungry, but actually are losing weight. If you have low TSH or more of a hyperthyroidism, you may wanna work with someone who is very skilled in understanding this condition because it's nuanced. There are medications that can help slow down the production of thyroid hormones that you could use. You can also think about supporting gut health as the immune system sits inside of the GI tract and as we balance the immune system, you can sometimes see improvements in this very highly autoimmune driven condition. And finally, you can think about stress management. If you have high TSH or hypothyroidism, the first thing I always think about is ensuring your nutrient status is really, really good. So here I would want to look at micronutrients like your selenium, your zinc, your iodine, and then actually looking at both vitamin D and vitamin A, which helps support the efficacy of thyroid hormone delivery. 
The most important lifestyle things I would say are related to stress management. So as stress is elevated, this drives up inflammation. The thyroid is an incredibly sensitive organ and it can worsen thyroid function when stress is high. The other thing that I would think about is essentially being cautious about any kind of excessive exercise or excessive dieting, which can put a stress on the thyroid. Most commonly in my clinic, I see an autoimmune-driven hypothyroidism, so low-functioning thyroid, where people are struggling with weight gain, brain fog, and depression. When I see someone with hypothyroidism, I first want to be curious about what's driving it from an autoimmune perspective. So I will look at thyroid antibodies to see how high those are and start thinking about supporting the gut thinking about supporting the immune system through probiotics and balancing any infections that might be in the GI tract. I also will support those nutrients that we talked about. So the selenium, the iodine, the zinc, the vitamin D, the vitamin A to support that kind of thyroid function. And then looking more closely at cortisol and seeing how cortisol and stress can be balanced to have a more positive impact on the thyroid. Weight and thyroid health are very much connected. I would say, Behind metabolic disease, this is the most common reason why someone might be struggling with weight. So as your thyroid is lowering in its output and function, you will have, you'll have trouble with maintaining your metabolism and therefore you will be more likely to gain weight. So iodine is essential nutrient that the thyroid needs to essentially make thyroid hormone. It's literally involved in the processing of the thyroid hormone to create the package that turns into the hormone that's secreted out into your body. So iodine can be found in iodized salt, although my favorite way to get iodine would be to focus on sea products. So like your kelps, your seaweeds are great ways to get iodine into your diet. So people come to me all the time talking about their desire to get off of thyroid hormone. And as a functional medicine doctor, I'm really like passionate about helping people reverse conditions. But at the end of the day, you can't just take off your thyroid hormone without really assessing, is this gonna have a negative impact to your health? So one thing that I want people to understand is if you're early on and if you're thinking about preventative health and if you're checking your levels regularly, you may catch a window where you could actually prevent a thyroid condition from happening. But if you've been on thyroid replacement for 25 years, the likelihood that you're gonna just be able to like stop and no longer have a thyroid condition is honestly unlikely. A full thyroid panel essentially refers to thinking about every single marker involved in your thyroid. So that would be a TSH, a free T4, a free T3, a reverse T3, a thyroglobulin antibody, a TPO antibody. This allows you to see like every aspect working of the thyroid. And I think certainly if you are a woman, this might be more interesting. And if you're struggling with forms of fatigue that haven't been assessed or kind of elucidated through other biomarkers, this might be also a reason to do it. And finally, if you're someone with hypothyroidism that's on thyroid replacement and still feels horrible, you may wanna look at a full thyroid panel. Weight can be caused by many things. And I think typically women come to see me and they assume that it must be their thyroid that is out of whack and that's causing their weight issues. But in fact, it's not always the case. And more commonly, I see some forms of subtle metabolic dysfunction that is causing weight and body composition changes before I see a thyroid issue as common.